Hey, what's up? It's Sean Belege and all of our programming here brought to you by Lawrence Tech. The programming today, you got it. It's hockey time. Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. Also presented by Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. For all things Michigan High School Hockey, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. National Coney Island. Dog gone good. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. And as always, welcome into the studio along with my pal John Kidd. I'm Sean Belegian. John, so much to get into. Another great week, another great yep. tournament. We have more tournaments coming up. Lots of great hockey being played all across the great state of Michigan. This week, our Alta Equipment Company's main event is the KLAA MIHL showdown between Trenton and Salem. And I go to Gross Point for this week's Coach's Corner. Hey, without further ado, let's go to this week's highlights. We begin with a Southeastern KLAA Conference crossover, Ann Arbor Skyline on the road to take on the Howell Highlanders. Skyline coming in with a 7 2 record. We pick things up in the second period. Game scoreless. They get the deep pass out to Jamie Newton on the breakaway. He deeks, he scores. Eagles out to a 1 0 lead. But back comes Howell just 30 seconds later. The sophomore Everett Patilla gets the puck off the rebound. He slides it in for his second goal of the season. We're tied up at 1 as we head into the third. Early in the final stanza now, Howell would strike again. Patilla feeds it over to Dominic Rossi, and the senior puts home his 11th on the season. Highlanders now up 2 1. Now, under six minutes to go in the game, Skyline would even it up. Here's Ryan Schmunk with the feed to Newton, his second goal on the game. It's 2-2 as we head into overtime. Early in the overtime session now, Skyline would win the faceoff in the Howell zone. Isaac Lippitt gets it out to Newton, who gets it past the defenders and nets the game winner for the hat trick. Ann Arbor Skyline beats Howell 3-2 in overtime. We head to the west side of the state now as Grand Rapids Catholic Central takes on Holland West Ottawa in an OK Conference showdown. We pick things up in the first period. Our National Coney Island Player of the Year candidate, Jake Onstadt, had his shot stopped. Traffic there in front. It would be Onstadt that would bang home the rebound to give the Cougars a 1-0 lead. Back comes West Ottawa just a few minutes later. The junior Cam Dunn with some nifty moves. His shot was denied, but the sophomore Alan Hort is there to bang his fifth goal on the season home. It's a 1-1 contest. More from the Panthers with under three minutes to go now in the first. It's Dunn from the tough angle to beat the keeper. That's his sixth goal on the campaign. And West Ottawa now up 2-1 after the opening period of play. GRCC would respond in the second. It's Onstock again beating everybody to the puck and he goes in his second on the game and we're knotted up at two. After a scoreless third, we head to overtime. West Ottawa just killed off a penalty. Brennan Clark intercepts the GRCC clear out attempt and puts it home for the game winner. That's his fourth goal on the season as West Ottawa beats Grand Rapids Catholic Central 3-2 in overtime. We head to the MIHL as Gross Point South goes on the road to take on defending Division I state champs the Shamrocks from Detroit Catholic Central. Gross Point South winners of seven of their last eight who get on the board just two and a half minutes into the contest. Keegan Spitz slides it over to Alexander Mills and the senior puts it home. The Blue Devils jump out to a one nothing lead. Catholic Central winners of six straight would even the game up later in the period as junior Colin Scheuer with the redeflection in front, his fifth on the season, it's 1-1 after the opening period of play. Back comes GPS early in the second now. Dean Terrio feeds it to Spitz, and our National Coney Island Player of the Year candidate puts it in for his team-leading 17th goal on the season. Blue Devils up 2-1 as we head into the third. GPS capitalize early in the final stanza. The senior Adam Strelke is there in front for the tip-in, his 12th goal on the season. Blue Devils now leading 3-1. 
Catholic Central response. Power play six minutes later. The senior, Jack Espen, rips it in for his ninth goal of the year. Shamrock's now down by a goal. Then, 40 seconds later, CC strikes again. Caden Hemi shot from the point is stopped, but Thomas Shea is there to knock home the rebound. We are all tied up at three. GPS would get the go-ahead goal later in the third, however, as the junior Sean Clark gets his own rebound, puts it in for his first goal on the season, and GPS hangs on to knock off Catholic Central 4-3 your final. And welcome back inside the studio, brought to you by the Alta Equipment Company. Sean, Ann Arbor Skyline beat Howell 3-2. Jamie Newton with the hat trick, including the one in overtime. Yeah, two teams on their way up. We've talked about both of them uh, during the course of the year. Really got to like what's going out in Ann Arbor right now. You got Skyline. They've really taken a step up. Pioneers taking a step up. Uh, we've talked about Howell. You know, they're a team that's going to bring it on a night in, night out basis. Kind of figured that one would be close. We go to the west side of the state as Holland West Ottawa beat Grand Rapids Catholic Central 3-2 to in overtime. Yeah, big one there. I mean, a shout out to Holland West Ottawa. Panthers get that win. Two teams that have been ranked throughout the season. Two teams capable of making a run in their prospective divisions as well. Another tight one. Panthers get the job done. And we go to the MIHL Gross Point South with a huge 4-3 to win over the defending Division I state champs in Catholic Central. Yeah, I was at that one uh, last Wednesday night. Uh, props to, to GPS. I mean, simply put, the Blue Devils beat them. Anybody that was there, they'd tell you the same thing. Jumped out to a nice lead. CC came uh, fighting back, scored two quick goals in the third to tie it. GPS got a, a goal late, but John, we were spot on about this Blue Devil team. We we mentioned it early in the year. Look out for this team. Uh, they've made us look smart. That is hard to do. And it's time now for our Coach's Corner, presented by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. I'm joined by the coach of Gross Point South, Paul Moretz. Paul, welcome to Hockey Time. Thank you. Thank you for having us. All right, so first off, you know, you guys had a big win over Detroit Catholic Central last Wednesday. Just talk about the win. Well, I mean, plain and simple, you said it, big win. Uh, anytime you can go into their rink and beat a team CC's caliber, you feel very good walking away with the W. All right, this is your first year at the helm at Gross Point South. Just talk about coaching with the boys this year. It's been a transition, and it's been a fun one, uh, quite frankly. For I get, We got a late start. Come June uh, was when we decided to make the switch. From June till now, we've just, you know, we've been going at it pretty hard. Just a complete buy-in from all the players from June till now, and it's it's been a fantastic ride so far. Talk about you guys playing in the MIHL. It's a tough game each and every night. It is. It's You know, it's a privilege to play in the MIHL. You know that no matter which team you're playing, you're going to get tested every single night. We relish that opportunity. We know there's going to be some growing pains, but we know at the end of the year it's going to make us a better team. And also, too, you guys are in Division Three. You know, it's a stack division this year when it comes time to the playoffs. It, it definitely is. Um, I mean, just looking at uh, our our side of the bracket in D3, there are some terrific teams out there, all the way from the UP down, you know, right to our region. We have Keegan Spitz in our Player of the Year watch, and just talk about how special a player he is. Keegan finds a way to put the puck in the net. It's not always the prettiest, but he's a goal scorer for us. We rely on him heavily. Uh, he's done a really great job on our power play. He's our bumper man on the power play. We're trying to develop the rest of his game as we go, but we know that he can score goals. Basically now going to be a month and a half until the playoffs. So what's your guys' goals now for the rest of the season? Just to continue to get better day in and day out. We just had that conversation today before we took the ice. But ultimately, we want to do everything we can to continue to get better, but make sure we're peaking at the end of February. And just lastly, how much do you enjoy this, going on the ice and coaching every day? I love it. This is my favorite part. Going out there and practice each day is, uh, I mean, games are great, but I, I honestly, the, the practices, I love practice each and every day coming in here. Being able to uh, go out there with, with this group is, is very special. All right, so thank you very much, Paul, for joining us here on Hockey Time, and good luck to you guys the rest of the season. Thank you. We appreciate it. And that was our Coach's Corner presented by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. Hey, State Champs Nation, Jenna Skalski here, and I'm here to tell you to check out the State Champs Michigan Winter Roundup premiering every Friday at 5 p.m. all winter long. 
The Roundup is where you can find highlights in girls basketball, boys swimming, competitive cheer, wrestling, bowling, and gymnastics. Presented by Lawrence Tech, check out the State Champs Michigan Winter Roundup, premiering Fridays at 5 p.m. on the State Champs Sports Network and the State Champs app. I admit it, I love working with money, negotiating, and making big decisions. That's why I'm majoring in finance and economics at Lawrence Tech. What's truly amazing about the education here is the small class sizes that give me easy access to my professors who truly care about my future. They even helped me get a great internship. And I was able to fulfill my lifelong dream of playing college golf. Lawrence Tech, where Blue Devils dare. My dad and my grandfather are officials. I've grown up around officials and seeing how much they enjoy being part of the games. As a student athlete, I've always appreciated the people out there who are willing to give back to the kids. The Legacy program lets me officiate while I'm still in high school, working younger kids' games. Officiating gives me a better understanding of the game, I get to make some pretty good money for a high school kid, and I even get to spend some quality time with my dad. There's help wanted, just whistle. Nothing more special than a rivalry game. There's nothing more special than the moment when adrenaline flows. Okay. The biggest thing here today is, is don't let you get caught up in your emotions. We head to the mid-Michigan area now. A pair of rivals squared off as Davison was at home to take on the Chargers from Flint Powers Catholic. Flint Powers looking to win its sixth on the season, and they would get on the board in the second period. Tim Washburn's shot is tipped in front by sophomore Andrew Wirtz. He's got the goal to give the Chargers a 1-0 lead, and they would add another one in the period. It's junior Tyler Lawrence getting the pass in front. He buries it for his fifth goal on the season. Flint Powers goes into third, leading two zip. But Davison starts to mount a comeback. The senior Jeffrey Schmidt picks the corner, scores his team leading 15th goal on the year, and the Cardinals are now only down by a goal. Then three minutes later, Davison strikes again. Schmidt with the feed to Owen LaFontaine. He scores his first goal of the season, and we are all tied up at two. Less than five minutes to go now. The Cardinals would get the go-ahead goal. Schmidt drops it back to Dylan McMullen, and the senior finds a back of the net for his 10th on the year. Davison goes on to beat their rivals from Flint Powers, three to two, your final. I have never, in my four years of coaching, seen a team resilient like that in the third period come back the way you did. That was unreal. Congratulations to all of you. I'm Lord Plant, and we go to a matchup in the Oakland Activities Association. Troy United traveling to take on Farmington United. TU looking to knock off Farmington for the second time this season. Three minutes into the game, on the power play, the junior Blake Backard stuffs home his fourth tally. Troy out to a one nothing lead. Seven minutes later, check out the junior Andrew Morgan carrying the puck and the sick little snipe far side top shelf. Fifth this season. 30 seconds later, and a little how do you do as the senior Corey Victor gets his name on the score sheet. Troy United led three zip after the opening period. Farmington United with five in the win column this season. Final period on the man advantage. Mad scramble in front of the Troy net. It's Joe Daniels. Scores his sixth overall, but not enough. Troy United takes care of Farmington United by a three to one final. Troy, now six and four on the season. Now to the UP people, MHSAA.TV coverage. Northville road tripping to take on the Copper Kings of Calumet. Northville in white looking for win four of the season. First period, first shot for the Mustangs. The senior Seth Borg snaps home his first on the year. Northville led one zip after the opening period. Calumet coming in with a 10-1-1 record, outshot the Stangs 56-16. But Northville netminder Joey Lobach standing on his head. Here denies Peter Larson. Lobach with 54 saves. Northville still up one as we headed into the third. But early in the final period, Calumet came through. The sophomore Jackson Riley is there with the tip in front. Fourth goal, this game would go into overtime. Just over two and a half minutes ago in the extra session. Copper Kings net the game winner. The senior Scott Lucas deposits his team leading 
14th goal of the campaign. Calumet holds home ice and knocks off Northville 2-1 to one in overtime. Hey, it's time for our main event brought to you by our friends at the Alta Equipment Company. What a dandy we got for you this week. How about Salem and Trenton? We got to win every single battle. We got to play 200 feet. We have to play our game. We have to go out there and, and have them change the way that they play. The way we play is with speed. We have to be aggressive. We head to the Victory Ice Center, the site for our Alta Equipment Company main event. Two teams in our top 25 scoring off as Trenton takes on the Rocks from Salem. Trenton in blue coming in on a five game unbeaten streak. They would get on the board just a minute and a half into the contest. It would be the junior defenseman Ryan Stanley ripping it from the point. That's his first goal on the season. Trojans take an early one nothing lead. And the 14 time state champ Trojans would strike again just a couple minutes later, the junior Bradley Nemeth keeps it in the Salem zone, snaps it top right corner, his seventh on the year. Trojans now up 2-0. Salem, coming in with a 10-2 record on the season, would cut into the deficit with 13 seconds to go in the first. It's the junior, Devin Grayshaw, scoring on the power play. The Rocks now down 2-1 after the opening period of play. Salem would go on the man advantage six minutes into the second, and it's Grayshaw once again putting home his second on the game. He leads the team with 12 goals on the season, and we're all tied up at two. Back comes Trenton just three minutes later. It's the senior, Brendan Donovan, getting the puck. He bangs home his first career high school goal. Trojans are back up three to two. Salem had a chance to even it up with two minutes to go in the period on the power play, but our player of the year candidate, Joey Cormier, comes through in the clutch, 24 saves on the night, and Trenton hangs on to beat Salem, 3-2 to two the final. Trojans now unbeaten in their last six games. It was a hard fought game, uh, they're number two in D1, so we just had to take it to them, get shots on that, you know, and uh, play good defense. The main event is presented by the Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. And welcome back inside the studio. You just saw our Alta Equipment Company main event between Trenton and Salem. Trenton, three to two. Yeah, you know, you're, you're talking about two of the better teams in, in each of their divisions. I mean, I think Salem, every, everybody knows the job that Ryan Ossenmacher's done. I, my personal opinion is I think this is the best team he's had yet. And, and I think you've seen that throughout the start of this year. Uh, Chad Clements, again, they, they are really rolling. He's got them playing Trenton hockey. You go in there, you find a way to win that hockey game. Uh, that's big. Uh, again, listen, Trenton has to be considered one of the favorites in Division Two. All right, we head to the OAA Conference. Troy United beat Farmington United 3-1. to one. I like seeing these stories. You know, I had a chance to go see Farmington United at least last year. I, I'd like to see them again this year if the opportunity presents itself. It's nice to see these teams starting to take a step up. You saw bits and pieces with it uh, certainly last year. There are some quality players in, in both of those areas. And, you know, I think it's not going to be that long before these guys are knocking on the door of some of the big boys. And we head to mid-Michigan. How about Davison? They were down 2 nothing going into the third period against Flint Powers Catholic. Three unanswered, and they, and they won 3-2. to two. Well, they've been a great story the last couple of years, no doubt about it. I, I, I think they've had some success over time. Uh, you know, you talk about it all, all the time. Uh, uh, Coach Travis Perry up at, at Flint Powers, they've had a heck of a lot of success. But that's another area that you put a circle around that whole area. Really, you can include Saginaw all the way down into, you know, uh, just south of Flint and everything. A lot of good hockey being played there, and that certainly is one of those games that showcases that. And we head up north. Calumet hosted Northville on Friday, 2-1 to one in overtime. Well, the one thing you could say about Northville is they're getting outstanding goaltending. They, they really are. Both, both of their goaltenders are, are, are getting the job done. That's a, a, a big... That's a big game for Northville. I, I think Gordy's done uh, a, a good job there, and he's going to get them going to go up there and play against a caliber of a team like Calumet. Listen, we were talking about Trenton in Division II earlier. Calumet's a team that can win it all in Division Three. Make no mistake about that. I think there are a couple teams up in, in Copper Country that could make that. So to give them the fight the way that they did and to get the goaltending they did, uh, good for the Mustangs there. 
And we stay in the Upper Peninsula. Congratulations to Corey Markham at Houghton. He was inducted into the Hockey Coaches Association Hall of Fame for this year. And they played Novi on Saturday, a wild one, 6-5 to five in overtime. Well, first of all, props to Coach Markham. He's one of the good guys. I think anybody that follows this game could tell you that. I think the ultimate compliment you can give somebody is the compliment you hear year in, year out when teams play Houghton. How difficult it is to play Houghton. And I think that falls right back on Coach Markham. I think if you go play for Houghton, you know one thing. You better work. And that team is a team that comes at you for the entire 51 minutes and beyond. So tip of the cap for sure to not only a great coach, but certainly uh, one of the gentlemen in this game, Corey Markham. And yeah, by all accounts, it was a wild game against Novi. Novi's another one of those teams that are moving up. But hey, tell me if this sounds familiar. Listen, Houghton... Cal you met, you know, in years gone by Hancock, it, any one of these teams are capable, once they get past that first game in the playoff, of beating anybody in Division Three. So congratulations to Coach Markham and certainly congratulations to the Gremlins. What's up, hockey fans? If you're also looking to get the latest highlights and news in boys basketball, you need to check out State Champs Hangtime Michigan. We comb the state for some of the best matchups featuring some of the top teams and players. State Champs Hangtime Michigan is for hoops junkies and it premieres right here on the State Champs Sports Network and the State Champs app Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern. All right, it's time now for our High School Hockey Player of the Year update brought to you by our friends at National Coney Island. Sean, we have a change this week. Well, you know what? Listen, when, when you start the season playing in the United States Hockey League, that tells you all you need to know. I, I, I don't think I have to even go any further than that. Uh, you're talking about a kid at Catholic Central that has been a dynamic player. So this is a situation we have to put Brendan on our list. I mean, there's just no other way to say it. And we got some players that are still lurking to get on that list. Yeah, you know what? I think one, and, and we're going to get a chance to see him. You know, we, I'm, we've we seen him already, but we're going to get a chance to see him uh, again this Saturday is Ian Smith. I mean, he's, he's really putting together a fantastic season. I asked some coaches about him. They're big fans of his. I think you have to go up to Saginaw as well. You know, there's there's another uh, young man that that is is knocking on the door right now, and, and Brady Rapoon, and of course, uh, there there's a big hockey family there. So uh, this isn't going to be the the last change. I, I'm sure of it. Putting Mr. Miles in there, this is one. I would hope I don't even have to justify this. When a kid starts the season playing in the United States Hockey League. We're fortunate to get him back, and we should all be grateful that a kid like that is playing in this league. He's one of the best kids in the state, period. Just the fact that he jumps back into the lineup. And remember, you can cast your vote at statechampsnetwork.com. The leading vote getter will never get removed off the list. Joey Cremier is still leading the vote. Well, you know what? It's hard to argue. He's, again, arguably the best goaltender in the state, one of the best teams in the state. But, uh, you know, certainly for Trenton, like so many teams out there, it's about taking that next step this year. And if they do that, boy, it's going to be pretty hard to deny Joey. So, Sean, when are we going to visit the Trojan Pit? You know, I was looking at the schedule, and there's a game coming up. We're not going to tell anybody right now, but there's a game coming up I got my eye on. And that was your High School Player of the Year update, brought to you by our friends at National Coney Island. And remember, Sean, extra onions, right? Extra onions all day. Hey, guys, Lauren Plant here to remind you that the deadline to submit nominations for the Detroit Athletic Club Foundation's Male and Female Athlete of the Year is fast approaching. As the host of the live awards show every year, let me clue you in on a few quick things you need to know. Number one, six male and six female nominees will be named once the application deadline has passed. If you do not submit a nomination form, I don't care how great of an athlete you are, you cannot be nominated. Number two, this award is very selective. These are for young men and women who are first team All-Staters or are projected to be this winter or for the upcoming spring season. It's only for seniors. You have to have a minimum overall GPA of 3.0 or better. And we're looking for leaders, both in school and in your community. Number three, each nominee gets $1,000 in scholarship money. The winners get $5,000 each. This is to help in your college education. And you get to come to a red carpet awesome awards show in May hosted by me. To download the application, go to DACAthleteoftheyear.com. The deadline to apply is February 3rd. To be nominated male or female athlete of the year is an incredible honor and one you'll never forget. All right, let's preview the week ahead in high school hockey. Let's go to, to the Lakes Valley Conference on Wednesday. No matter 
the sport is always a rivalry between Milford and Lakeland. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm intrigued to see a couple of these teams. There's some good hockey being played there. I think the one team that a lot of people are talking about, uh, South Lion Unified, out that way. So you're right, John, kind of just out past my neck of the woods. You and I are going to have to take a road trip out there and see some of these guys play. All right, on Friday night, you had Lake Orion taking on Macomb, Dakota. Yeah, you know, Dakota's a team that they're this close. You know, you've seen them make noise in the past, and certainly they've been this close uh, as well. Lake Orion is a team that traditionally uh, has has been a pretty darn good team as well, so we'll keep an eye on that one. Our number one team in the state, Birmingham Brother Rice, goes to the UP this weekend, Houghton and Calumet. Yeah, never easy when you make that trip. Never easy when you play Houghton or Calumet, regardless of where you play them, especially when you go up there. Uh, big Big test for Brother Rice. Heck, big test for Calumet and Houghton as well because Calumet and Houghton are two teams. You know, I keep talking about them, John, in the context of Division Three. They're two teams that can be anybody regardless of division as well. So that'll be fun. All right, we go to the west side of the state as Granville will be hosting Saginaw Heritage on Friday. Yeah, that is that a fun game? You know, two teams that you kind of got used to them being at USA Hockey Arena come March. Uh, Saginaw Heritage is, ha, has really done such a good job years running. Granville, uh, props to, to Coach Brazil for, for getting that team back at the level that we had grown accustomed to. You know, he told me last year, beginning of the year, he said, hey, listen, we're going to be young, we're going to take our lumps, but we're going to be the better for it. And I think they've proven that so far this season. KLA showdown between Brighton and Salem. Shh, don't tell anybody. Brighton's been playing really well. Is it starting to be back to it's Brighton? That should scare everybody. All jokes aside, that should scare everybody. Great test uh, against Salem as well. I'm going to get a chance to go see Salem again uh, this week. I think Thursday night they're they're playing playing Franklin, so I'm going to get out and and get a chance to see that one. But that is going to be a good test for D1. All right, on Saturday, you have UD Jesuit going to play Livonia Stevenson. Yeah, that's a that's a monster one. You know, it, it's interesting. U, UD Jesuit has been so up and down, but hold the phone. It could be because they play in the MIHL and they play tough out-of-conference games like this. This is a team capable of beating anybody. anybody. Uh, Livonia Stevenson, they've just been on a roll. There's, there's no other way to say it. They still haven't lost in state, so this will be a big test at Eddie Edgar and Livonia. All right, on Saturday, and this will be our Alta Equipment Company main event for next week. Forest Hills Central taking on Forest Hills and any. Two teams that are really, really playing well. I, I, I think first you start with the coaches. Coach Zaschek has done a great job of, of getting his Rangers uh, back on, on track. And Coach Bissett and, and NE, I mean, heck, they've been on fire, one of the hottest teams in the state. It's interesting. You know, I brought this up. I, I think uh, Forest Hills Central has won 9 out of 10. The only loss in that mix to NE. So a little revenge in, in, in uh, their mind, uh, but should be a dandy on Saturday. And on Saturday, we are going to the Northville at Plymouth hockey game, and it's a special one. It's Military Appreciation Day. What a great idea. You know, it's interesting. Coach Vento showed us uh, the the uh, the jerseys honoring the military, and we were like, we got to get out there. I mean, just a great idea. The jerseys outstanding. You know, you've, you've got some incredible players over there. Ian Smith is a guy that, you know, we talked about in the ranking, and a guy that's certainly knocking on the door of our player of the year. Uh, North Hill, as we mentioned, they play so well in their own zone. They have two different goaltenders that can really put a spell on you. Should be a dandy out there uh, on Michigan Avenue. And on Monday, it's the Mac Showcase out in Mount Clemens. Yeah, it's such a fun event. If you haven't been out there, go out there. Uh, we spent pretty much all day out there last year. Just a fantastic event. A lot of good hockey. I- I'll tell you what, that side of town doesn't get the credit that it deserves for some of the hockey that they're churning out. And, uh, you know, the best way to to let everybody know is make some noise come playoff time, and a couple of those teams have an opportunity to do just that. Time now for the MHSAA Hockey Clip of the Week. We go back to the Ann Arbor Skyline Howell Hockey Game. Jamie Newton for Skyline had a hat trick in this one, including the game winner in overtime to beat Howell. And that's your MHSAA Hockey Clip of the Week. Where does the time go? I guess it's true. It's it's true what they say, isn't it? Time flies when you're having fun. As always, props to you for tuning in. Really appreciate the coaches always chiming in, giving us, giving us insight. Uh, we wish we could be everywhere. We simply can't be. So you guys always getting in our ear and letting us know what's going on is greatly appreciated. And you can follow State Champs on all of our social media channels. 
and you can download the new State Champs app that is available on iPhone and Android. And that's it for another edition of State Champs Hockey Time. So, Sean, see you at the ring. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University, where Blue Devils dare. Also presented by Alta Equipment Company, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider with over 40 brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time. Also brought to you by the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. For all things Michigan High School Hockey, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. National Coney Island, dog gone good. And the Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics.